just wee press back there at the nostril just to give you that nice profile then just want to run this spoon shaped tool underneath the nostril there just to define that a little bit more If you're working along at home and um, you get to this stage, um, well, 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 we'll complete today, you can go back in in a few days time and use um, these wee fine tools that are in your set. So this one has um, like a wee straight edge and there's also another wee tool. So this wee tool here with a small lip and you can use that just to, to trim away and refine the detail. Um, but now it's harder to do that fine detail when the clay is quite soft so I recommend leaving that for a wee day um, I can put another wee video up of just refining this one um, I would be refining in there okay well that was just to just to mention those channels that you can use them um, yeah, and then we'll soften all that in the paper. So the next thing I would just look at would be just to, to double check that I'm happy with the portions of this again. This can, um, there could be a slight differ difference between braids of horses and how deep this cheek muscle is. Um, so you can use your template or if you're trying to recreate your own horse, um, get the photographs out and just just compare. But the, the next but we begin with is this the angle of this cheek coming up um, around here. This is really going to inform where our ears go. So um, this will sw sweep round and then it the angle straightens up slightly. So from there, if you think of that, from round that cheekbone going straight across, that tells me this needs to take a bit off there. So. Again, you go round that curve of that cheekbone, cross, and your ear's going to go in here. So you've got, you've got the line of that cheekbone, straight line there, and the line of the, the jawbone cutting across. This is going to be your uh, the centre of your attachment point for the ear. So to get the, the size of the ear, you'll cut the ear out from a separate piece of clay, a um, piece of clay about that thickness. Um, how you'll get the length of the clay from that centre point to the centre of the eye. That's going to be the length of clay that you'll cut. And um, it doesn't really, it's better if you make this edge longer than you need because you're probably going to trim it anyway. But don't make it too narrow. It's better that you have too much clay and you trim. And if you're using air drying clay, just use scissors to trim it to size. So this looks a bit like um, a triangle with slightly curved sides. The, the inside of the ear will be a shorter curve than the outside. So we'll, as we pinch that narrower, we'll, we'll try and keep that from getting too big. Um, and I'm so still have, this is going to be the inside uh, um, of the ear and this edge is going to be closest to the centre of the, the nose. So I'm smoothing that with my finger so that any, if, if anything there's a diagonal play in this way. It's not a blunt edge and it, it, the, the, the sharpest edge isn't to the outside, it's sort of to the inside. So we'll soften that there. Then when you come to do the outside again, you're, you're pinching it, but you, you're nearly encouraging it to go a wee bit wider to create a longer line and a shorter line. 
how you just say about it. It's important that the, the, the part that attaches to the insertion point stays no thinner than this. You don't want to be making this any thinner than that. So that's it roughly there. So to help you out with this, um, I would use um, a round tool. Place the point of your ear to the centre of the tool and wrap the ear round it. Just if there's any cracks in the clay, you might need to add a little bit of water and just smooth it into the cracks. So I just wrap that right round and then where that's overlapping there. And just take the scissors, cut that off there. So at that stage you can take it out. I'll do the next one, whatever. Um, then that's giving you that nice round sort of tube effect of the ear. I'll just demonstrate here. You would do this flat on the ground, but so it's easier for you to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this um, from this angle. So I would put this edge, open that up slightly, this edge of the ear flat on the table and just pinch a ridge down the centre all the way to the tip. Then remember that this is your inside edge and this is the longer outside edge. Just take your tool and I'm just we flexed open that up. We'll do a few on this side because you want the have a wee bit of a flare here and then going in. Now, um, at this stage, because you've been working with the clay, it will probably have changed in length. So you can just remeasure from the centre of that insertion point to the centre of the eye. And that's going to give you the, roughly the length of the ear you're going to need. But you attach, well, to cut, you have to cut the, the ear slightly to attach it. So using that as your guide, think of that being the centre of your horizontal line and make that cut if this line continued across. And cut there. Just take your knife and cut that there. So next stage we would cross hatch and slip. Just smooth that hole right in when you're cross hatching. And when you're um, attaching it, I would use a wee round tool and use the tool to press it. The aiming for that, that hole you made, the centre of your insertion point, use this tool to press the clay against the main horse body. And then you just smooth and blend that in. When you're blending it in, remember the, the, this muscle that we outlined at the beginning? You don't want to blend it to meet that. It has to blend and there's a groove there behind the ear before this muscle begins. That groove would be where the bridle would sit. So you just smooth that in. And think of it almost having, if you think of it almost having a bit of a tail to the ear, so it's almost going in and a V. So you can see there's a groove there before the muscle. There's a groove there um, that would go around the jawline. I'll go to the front and rearrange them. I like the, the tip of the ear to have a wee bit of a backward flip. And also, if you're not sure now, you can move the ears around. They could be pointing backwards or sidewards. But if you're unsure um, what angle to put them on at, that angle around the jawbone, if you run a parallel line to that, run your ear parallel to that line, you're not going to fall off. Then, put your, then facing the front, um, I want to just make sure that the ears are level. This one seems slightly shorter. So I can just stretch it up a little bit more so they're more of a matching pair. Um, okay, these wee tools are better used whenever clay is just that wee bit drier.
Okay, another thing that you want to, to check there about the seam level. So you're checking them for height. Um, you also want to check that you haven't got one ear forward and one ear back. So I'd run a wee tail across. And just check that there. And then just blend that with the, the brush. So now we can do a wee bit more work on the neck. Just creating that wee bit of a cr crest to the neck. So pressed in a wee bit of a crest here, you've got fullness of this muscle. Then there's nearly another plane there, just in that area there. And then this gullet will come from here. So you'll need your your tool, your loop tool, then this away slightly. Right, this is the the thickest part of the neck. This would be sort of middle thickness, and then this is the narrowest part. So. Depending on where you want to finish it, then you can um, you can add in a shoulder there if you want. Um, the other thing to do at this stage is, you lift it off your board, you can, you know, don't want to do it too much because my clay is quite soft still, but you can create more of an arc in the neck there, round the neck more, just by tucking it in. Um, okay, and just watch your nose doesn't go into shape. So then, you would, so then that, that sort of brings us on to the fun bit. Um, where we make the the mane. So the mane, um, you would just take wee thin, your off cuts, wee thin pieces of clay like this, put them in your hand and keep one part of it thick. I'll just cut that piece. One part of it th about that thickness and then the other side, just stroke it so that you've got a thick side and a thin side. Starting from the bottom, work up in wee sections. So you would just and the other thing is, um, depending on what side your horse's mane lies, um, you can either do it to the side or the other side. The other thing is you can have it lying flat, or if you want to make it look like it's galloping, you can um, have it um, flying back. But do add it on in sections like this. Um, it can be an idea to add a wee bit more texture just by stroking it with the tool. And when you're stroking it with the tool, pay attention to the shape of the clay you've created. Sorry, oh sorry, I nudged it there, I nudged it back. So you don't want them all going the same direction, um, unless you have a very tidy um, mane. Oh, do it. So you just build it up like this. Again, don't go for too thick a section at a time. Cut off a flat bit, which will be your joining bit. The rest of it, stroke. Add a wee bit of texture into it. Now, if it's too long, just pinch bits off. And then overlap them. So, you know, don't have them all perfectly uniform. Overlap them. And just join it all. And you just keep basically working like that. And the mouth will just layer some up. So we're cutting a flat edge, join an edge. And again, you can have your mane as long or short as you want. Um, you know, you could have a really long or whatever. Um, the other thing I would suggest is sometimes it can be nice to leave a wee bit of a gap. 
um, just sometimes, you know, unless your horse's mane always sits perfectly. Quite often there could be a wee bit that maybe lie on the other side. Okay, just before I start the mouse, I want to just check a few things. Um, the measurements, just, just double checking really that I have the right proportions of the cheekbone um, and that it's roughly in the right place um, and that the cheekbone, the size of the cheekbone relates to the rest of the, the face. So really from the edge of the cheekbone to the this area here should be the same as the back of the cheekbone to the inner eye and that same distance should be the distance to the end of the nose. Far off, I'll probably trim a wee bit there. Um, probably trim a wee bit there, but close enough. That also, um, just double check something. That high just needs to be a wee hair from her back. Don't do a wee bit, it's very dry. I'm going to give it a wee squat. Mm -hmm. I'll do some more work on the eye and the ring when it gets a bit wetter. Yes, as this is just um, a spray of water just to wet it down. So, the mice in relation to the cheekbone. Um, if you think of this being the big giant hinge, there's there's a wee groove here and then the cheekbone comes up slightly before it comes down and where that cheek comes up that's where your teeth are going to come out so you know if you were drawing that on you've got your upper row of teeth and your lower row of teeth and the mouth lines up roughly to the lower a row of teeth so I know that that line's not far away Um, how far back does the nose come Um, generally if your nose is here if your nostrils there it's going to come back a wee bit beyond that so you don't want your mouth if this is your nose you don't want your mouth finishing about here or you don't want the mouth finishing parallel with the nose it comes a bit higher Just double check the other side. I just make sure it has the same measurements. I'm going to write there, there, to there. Just do a wee scratch again. Here we go. So. Oh gosh, this is moving. That doesn't help. I need to tighten that a wee bit. Up the chin, corner of the eye. Mm. So we have to build up a wee bit more there. That needs to be a wee bit higher here. Just say this is sliding about my wee calibers or like this. I'll just check that uh, I feel the same distance back. I'm just doing that really by feeling. Um, again, just working. You could actually, do, 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 if you had a ruler, you can just go and go further. Hold that to the side. This needs to come down over the side like that. Um, and so, mm -hmm. so 
from there, the corner there, it's going to go up and down. And where it goes up, that wee knot is going to be the teeth. Those come up. There's a little draw, and there, this is where I'm going to the way for that to be. Okay. So, I'll get a wee bit of definition in there. Just going to take away. It depends. You can either take or take away or add on, depending on what um, your sculpture needs. If you've got too much, you can trim it away. Too little, you add some more on. Mm, I'm just creating this groove here. Just goes to the tip. I'm just cutting away a groove behind the back row teeth. Add that into the back of the jaw. I hope I can patch these videos together for you. I don't know. Do you know what it could be? Um, because it's raining here, and I live in I live in Donegal, but might as well be totally out in the sticks because there's very poor reception on the mobile phone. So it could be just that I'm not getting a Wi-Fi signal on the phone. And the connection to Facebook isn't probably strong enough to let me do a live video. It's probably the most likely reason. So what I've done there is I've knocked that back so that the jaw is knocked back. The teeth have a bit of a ridge and you can just put that in and then soften it. Um, you can soften it with a wet chest brush. Just gonna get the heavy squirt for the one down. Right, um and from that information where the teeth are, then that allows me to make that more of a groove to the chin. What are times like my mouth's off? So, and then I want to um, knock back this part of the chin. And when you're doing the chin, if you think of it, sometimes I just lift it up and work at it from underneath. Because what you need um, is to have like a center line underneath it, and you're working um, to. Um, cut that in towards the centre line, a bit of a diagonal plane again, so that it goes very much into the centre we normally bit. That is lovely to grab hold of and gently give a wee wobble to. Um, and so by doing the teeth first, emphasising the jawline, that gives me the placement of the chin um, and the placement of the chin is informed by that line of the mouth as well. That's starting to already give me um, a fullness around the mouth. So I'm just going to take this tool here. I might be too squidgy around the bottom. I'll let this dry for a wee bit. Um, and I'll just soften that. I could do it with the paintbrush. And then what I like to do is... So you've got the line of the teeth and there'll be a... You can put on a wee sausage of clay but... I like to make sure there's a wee bit of a pinch in just before the corner of the mouth. Because uh, it's quite wet, so I'll come back to that or I can use this just to tuck that. Um, I think I tuck in the lower lip and underneath the upper lip. Make sure you have, there's a higher ridge of muscle just around that corner of the mouth. So, 
and then we can brush the paint up a little bit to soften over the brush. Now what, I'm, what I can see from here is this needs to come in. I haven't enough of an angle here, so I'm just tidying that angle. Put it on one side and I just so this is the next we saw. I can't remember actually how long Facebook lets you, um, how long the video is that Facebook lets you upload. But if I run into any problems, I maybe put it on YouTube and link them together and put them on YouTube or something. I am not very technically minded when it comes to all this video and stuff and social media, but a lockdown is forcing me to learn. Again, I'm just trying to enforce that um, six shape. So there's a, a little, and now this is angled back. I don't know if you can pick it up. So this piece of flesh angles back in, almost disappears around there. One's just I'm just not happy with that it's just a wee bit bulky looking and it's a little too big so I'm gonna have to add one right in there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to add one a wee bit there. So when you're sculpting you are constantly assessing um, are these symmetrical? Does this look right? Why does it not look right? Is it too big? Is it too small? And then uh, you make your small corrections. Sometimes the smallest wee correction is all that it needs. Just a wee tweak. And when you're bringing it in, don't forget that that, that muscle that comes along to the top of the... You don't want to lose that. I'm going in underneath that muscle. I'm going a wee bit above it. What I want to do is I'm going to fill out a wee bit just here. And soften all that in. So I'm going to leave a slip on. I'm just rolling it into a wee fine sausage. Well, and it's important to keep looking at it from all the different angles. And you should have these wee tools in there. If I sent you a kit, you will have these wee tools.
I'm just looking that I have an angle that slants this, that, that sort of angle there that the nostril isn't straight down that there's a slant to that nostril So again, I'm resting my finger underneath and judging the height. And I just want that in a wee bit. Up some of it on. Okay, this wee bit of flesh, I just want to tuck that in so it disappears in round the corner. And I'm just checking for that angle that that's angled there and so it's angled let me see so it's angled um it's not straight down and it's not aligned with the nose it's angled back um and also if you were to look at it from the front this isn't it isn't parallel with the, the front of the nose and it's not parallel with the side it's on an angle so I'm just checking that uh, this would be a good place to stop and then I'll do some mouth Okay, this is part five um, of the detail of the horse's head. So the last video kind of cut off before it was ready. So one of the things that you might have missed on that is whenever I finished part four, the other thing I did was I put a wee, a wee crease in, in here and then just softened that. And that it goes diagonally. So I have the this plane round the eye um, I have the area that goes up diagonally and then it branches around the ear okay and I've worked out underneath the eye there so I have this plane here finished so the next area I will work out um, will be the neck so what I'm looking for with the neck is there's a very prominent muscle that runs along here. So I'll just draw that on. So there's a prominent muscle. Now it kind of goes, you think of this plane where the ears attach on, just start there. And this kind of curves slightly and then goes down here. So this is a big strong muscle here. Again, it depends on the type of horse. Um, generally you've got that large area there. There's also, um, so that's a ridge. This is still quite proud, this area here. And then you have this, the, the, we'll take a lot of this away. This is the gullet. So, and then beyond this, there's like the crest of the mane, or of the neck rather. So this is going underneath there. So you you've those three areas of volume, if you like, to to work on. 
So I will um, just take away a wee bit behind the ear, a wee bit behind here, and take a wee bit away for the crest of the neck. So by taking a wee bit away, that's kind of making this more this area more prominent. If you find you don't have enough clay there, just cross hatch and slip and add some more uh, clay on to get that muscle. So then we'll take away just a little. So I've, I've created quite a deep sort of groove here. So that's quite deep, but then it comes shallower coming up here. So the next bit I would take away would be creating this gullet. So this would be the narrowest part of the neck. But you definitely want those three definite volumes going up and then the crest of the neck at the back and you know do try and get a nice curve going in there um depending on the, the type of horse thoroughbred maybe you wouldn't have as big a sort of crest of the neck um but then um you know Frisians, welsh ponies you know there, there's quite a lot of breeds that will have a much more defined arch So I'm taking this area in slightly, so it's not as prominent as this plane, but not as narrow as the gullet. So I'll just brush off the excess. Um, at this stage, it is a good idea. Now this is I'm not softening that in just yet. It's a good idea to lift your your horse head up and look at it from underneath. And you want this gullet area. So I've got this clearing up for you. This gullet area to be, if you think of a center line, to be equal thickness away from the center. And then again, this next area, the next fuller uh, plane. Um, to be um, symmetrical as well and similar in volume. Um, and you can also check, you know, that the chin is roughly symmetrical and that your cheeks you can check all the underneath of it. If you are, I'm using um, a crank clay, if you're going to be firing the clay in the kiln, one of the things I would do is I would hollow in, I would take this area, I'd move this up, I would take this area, you can either section it um or just let's see if you can see that take that area out with a small loop tool this is maybe a wee bit big just to take that weight out of the clay and hollow that and you start hollowing in you can go right into the the eye sockets in the top of the head um i've also um used a wee tool like this and gone in um to, to take a wee bit of the weight out of the, the the mass of the the head just really so your clay dries and fires better um i would also um put a wee hole in here you know quite deep and then i'll work at it from the back and hollow and i'll scoop in scoop in you can um section it cut it in half um trying to avoid detail and scoop it all out if you're scooping it out leave leave a thickness off around a sort of pinky finger so if I'm scooping it out, I'll only really sort of scoop this area out, leave the, the strength in the walls. Okay. So once I'm happy with the that, 
I just really just a damp brush. Where's my damp brush? And then just soften those lines. Blend that in a wee bit. Um, after you've sort of blended in, when you're finishing off your brush strokes, do you try to brush in the direction the hair would grow? And then finish off by um, just a few reflex to suggest the mane on this side. What can be quite nice is to have a few wee tendrils coming this side as well. Okay. So hopefully that's enough information for you to um, finish off your sculptures. Thank you very much for watching. And just, I hope you all got enough detail from that. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Thank you.